Hello and welcome to Varsity Blues. I'm Alex Prasad alongside Caitlin Urka, Andy Baina. I think I said that right. No, I think I messed Baena. it up. Baina. See, you, got, you know, got. I don't know. I just figured out. I don't even know how to pronounce one of my co-hosts' names. I'm Alex Prasad. It is Varsity Blues. Blues. I'm a little depressed. I'm, I'm dried off, though. <laughs> I'm dry now, at least. But 35-17 Notre Dame. Ouch. All right. Well... We might as well relive it one more time. Let's go to the tape. Let's check it out. Let's see what happened. Let's see how we fumbled away our chance at a road victory against the Fighting Irish. Game started off with Army Special Forces delivering the football. He has good hands. He didn't drop the ball. We could have used his advice right there. There's the kickoff for you. Here we go. Right off the bat, three, trying to throw it to Brandon Miner right there. Oops, forgot the ball. And right after that, Notre Dame scores their first touchdown. Then later, Michael Shaw fumbles the kickoff. There is a touchdown in the back of the end zone. Jimmy Clausen finds Karma. 14-0 lead, just like that. And like four minutes have gone by in the game. One bright spot, though, Sam McGuffey. Nice little run right there, 11-yard gain. But Michigan faced a fourth down. Took some timeouts, talked it over. And look at that. It's a fake punt. What do you know? Charlie Weiss caught, you know, Red-handed, I don't know what he was doing during the timeout, but he certainly wasn't paying attention to what Michigan might be doing. Later, J Jimmy Clausen, play-action pass, 48 yards, touchdown, 21-0. I mean, right off the bat, all in the first quarter here, folks. What is going to happen? Well, believe it or not, Michigan, they care this year, folks. They're going to start to try to come back. First, we have Brandon Miner here. Nice little run. Holds on to the football, always a positive thing for Brandon Miner to do. Breaks a couple tackles. And two plays later, Sam McGuffey, uh, excuse me, Martinez Odom right there with a nice catch and run. And then Sam McGuffey with the play that, I mean, defines his Michigan career right now. Runs into his own man, spins, runs into end zone. It's 21-7. Things are looking all right. But on the ensuing drive, Jimmy Clausen on third down, throws an interception. Morgan Trent picks it off. You know, good old Morgan Trent, always, always looking out for uh, Michigan defense. Now here comes Sam McGuffey again. Here's a big 29-yard run, bouncing off tacklers. And just like that, it's end of the first quarter, 21-7, Notre Dame. Later in this same drive, three showing a little mobility there with the pump fake, then rolls out to the right, picks up 21. But Michigan inside the red zone. At least they didn't turn it over. Has to settle for a field goal. It's 21 to 10. So the lead is dwindling for Notre Dame. But on the next drive, light nice little slap pass there by Jimmy Clausen. And oh, look, broken tackle. I'll give Donovan Warren credit though. He does end up tackling uh, Tate finally. You'll see him tackle him right there. But I mean, he's the one that blew it right there. And just a few plays later, a one yard touchdown run by Hughes, 28 to 10. And let me tell you, Notre Dame fans were a little bit excited at this point. There's, there's nothing you can say. I mean, they, they just got blown out of the water right off the bat. But again, Michigan sides, they're going to try to fight back. Here's three to Daryl Stoneham, 20-yard game. Nice to see three finally settle into rhythm in this game. And then here, three checks the signal, gets it, and gives it to Kevin Grady. This time, he pummels his way into the end zone for a touchdown, 28-17. Remember those, you know, that nice powerful run near the goal line a little bit later. So that wrapped up a first half that saw 28 points from Michigan, or excuse me, for Notre Dame, 17 for Michigan. When you look at the numbers, you have to wonder why Michigan wasn't on top, and the answer was just turnovers, Katie. Oh, definitely. I mean, when you have two turnovers in the first half, and they allow Notre Dame to work short field on offense. They put them inside Michigan's 20-yard line twice with the ability for then Clawson to just kind of pick apart the Michigan defense. It's not the defense's fault that they couldn't stop them. They were going to probably score either way, if not a touchdown or a field goal. That's just unfair. You might as well have said starting the game, hey, uh, Notre Dame, we feel bad for you. Here's 14 points and, and a nice little cushion. That's basically what those two turnovers did for the Wolverines. And then that play action pass, Andy, just catches everyone off surprise. And I mean, kudos to Notre Dame staff for going for the kill, going for the jugular right off the bat. You know, definitely, uh, I saw, it. That, that play definitely killed my morale. I mean, by, by the end of this first half, you know, I was feeling okay for our chances. But, I mean, I saw us give up big play after big play, turnovers, terrible field position. I was pretty discouraged. Well, and then it, things only got more discouraging the second half. We're going to take a look at the tape right now as a monsoon came. No one, no one knew that there was plans for that. Here's Sam McGuffey again, though, running wild. You see, there's some rain, some rain falling right now. 
Here's three, dropping back to pass. He's going to find his man, Greg Matthews, who drops the ball. That, that was really beautiful. Braylon Edwards-esque, I have to say. You know, every once in a while, Braylon would drop those. That's what Greg Matthews did right there. Here's Zoltan Mesco has to punt it away. That was a story of the second half. The rain came. No one could catch the ball. And, of course, Michigan couldn't even hold on to it. Fumbles all over the place. You see time ticking away. Still 28-17. Here's three looking, going deep. Finds his man, Martius Odom, who was highly, highly uh, recruited by Notre Dame and decided to go with Michigan instead. And then Sam McGuffey, a big run. Looks like Michigan may be able, despite the monsoon, to tie things up or, you know, to windle that lead. It's 28-17 at this point, remember. Here's Kevin Grady. Look at this. Breaking tackles. He's going to get to the end zone. Oh, forgot something. That's the football, folks. Notre Dame falls on it. That was Michigan's best chance. Of course, right there, they're only down 11. And then things get really ugly. Stephen three. Oops, he forgot the football, too. Wait, who's got it? Who's got it? Notre Dame's got it. They're running the other way. That's a touchdown. It's 35 to 17. That's the way it would end up. Of course, we have a nice little gift from Nick Sheridan a little bit later here with an interception. From, uh, but, you know, not all his fault. It goes right through Carson Butler's hands, right to the Notre Dame linebacker. That was our best shot, you know, even down 35-17 you know, at that point in, late in the uh, fourth quarter. That's all that she wrote, folks. That was the end of the game. Despite Michigan outgaining Notre Dame almost 2-1, to one, we still fall to the Irish. Well, I mean, what do you say? Hanging out of the ball is important. And, and Rich Rodriguez said this in his press conference post game. He said, Notre Dame did not beat us. We beat ourselves. And that is entirely true because Michigan outperformed Notre Dame in every single category on Saturday. They simply could not hang on to the football. And the mental errors, those are unforced errors that – cost Michigan the football game. And uh, fortunately, they're fixable if you want to be the optimist, but unfortunately, they cost us the game. Well, I mean, even on top of the fumbles, you also had Nick Sheridan coming in, you know, as our backup quarterback after an injury to Stephen Three, throwing two interceptions. I mean, I'm not going to steal their stat here. You can bring that out later. But the guy made some big mistakes. It's definitely something we didn't need, you know, at the end of the game as we're trying to mount a comeback. It's just unexcusable on top of the other turnovers, and I don't think we had a chance with all that stuff working against us. And, of course, Sheridan came into that game because of uh, Stephen Threat. We thought it was an injury originally. It was cramps. cramps. It's a type of injury. Uh, I, I suppose. Well, I, you know. in, in four lost fumbles, Caitlin. Why is that significant? Well, it hasn't happened since 1995, last time we were playing Memphis. Uh, so, yes, that's very significant. Six turnovers in general, uh, I mean, the stat itself should be significant, but the fact that it hasn't happened in uh, over a decade, that's, that's pretty amazing. And that for hap to happen to Rich Rodriguez and the Wolverines on Saturday is just sad. Well, and the thing that bothers me, Andy, in particular, is you, know, you can talk about all you want about uh, Notre Dame you know, having more experience in Michigan. Obviously, three, you know, has never started a road game. He did today. Uh, or he did on Saturday, rather. I mean, Michael Shaw had a fumble on that kickoff, but it wasn't all the young guys making these mistakes. Kevin Grady had the fumble at the goal line. Brandon Miner, I mean, how many times have you seen Brandon Miner fumble? I mean, it's not just the inexperience. These guys are supposed to be our veterans. They're supposed to be our leaders, and their fumbling on the goal line is totally inexcusable. I mean, I don't know how many times we can reiterate, like, the fact that we need to not turn the ball over, especially we don't need that from our veteran players who need to be showing leadership as juniors, you know, stepping up in the offense. That's why Sam McGuffey is getting 23 carries a game right now. Well, here's the problem, though, is that our veterans aren't veterans always on the field. They're veterans in junior, senior standing, but they're not getting that playing time. For example, Grady, that was his first action of this season. And so for him, you know, he, yes, he's a, he has 